the topic is anatomy of the lungs the lungs are paired organs which are essential for respiration they lie in the thoracic cavity the right and left lungs are separated by a median septum called the mediastinum the right lung is larger and heavier whereas the left lung is smaller and lighter this is due to the presence of the heart on the left side which excavates into the left lung making it smaller the texture of the lungs is spongy and elastic which provides it recoil for re expiration on touching crepitations can be felt due to the air present inside the lungs in newborns the lungs are rosy pink in color however with age due to deposition of the carbon particles they become slaty gray in color and mottled in appearance the general features of the lungs the shape is of a cone or a half cone the parts of the lung we have the apex which is blunt or rounded and is directed upwards or superiorly it extends into the root of the neck posteriorly it lies at the level of the neck of the first rib whereas anteriorly it extends almost 2.5 cm above the level of the clavicle opposite to the apex lies the base the base is concave and semi lunar in shape it is directed downwards hence also called the inferior surface it rests on the dome of the diaphragm therefore also known as the diaphragmatic surface apart from the inferior or diaphragmatic surface there are two more surfaces in the lungs the medial and costal surface the medial surface is comparatively flat and bears a number of impressions it can be identified by the presence of the hilum that is the area where the structures enter or leave the lung the medial surface can be further subdivided into a large anterior part which is related to the mediastinum called the mediastinal part and a small posterior part related to the vertebrae called the vertebral part the costal surface is large convex and smooth it is related to the thoracic wall and bears the impressions of the overlying ribs or costa hence called the costal surface the lung has three borders the inferior border is sharp and it separates the base from the medial and costal surfaces the anterior border is characteristically thin sharp and very well defined the posterior border on the other hand is thick rounded and ill defined it is important to differentiate the thin sharp anterior border from the rounded ill defined posterior border to determine the site of the lung the site determination of the lung is done with the help of the general features and parts as discussed before first of all we identify the apex which will be directed superiorly opposite to the apex lies the base which will be directed inferiorly or downwards then we differentiate the two surfaces of the lungs the medial surface is identified by the presence of the hilum and will be directed medially the costal surface will be directed laterally or towards the thoracic wall we then differentiate the two borders the sharp anterior border and the rounded ill defined posterior border to further confirm the anterior and the posterior border we can identify the structures present in the hilum of the lung the arrangement of the structures in the hilum from anterior to posterior are denoted as vab structures 
that is anterior most lies the superior pulmonary vein which can be identified by its thin wall and collapsed lumen in the middle lies the pulmonary artery which has a comparatively thicker wall and a round patent lumen and posterior most lies the bronchus the wall of the bronchus is characteristically hard due to the presence of the cartilage apex base sharp anterior border rounded posterior border costal surface medial surface further divided into mediastinal part and vertebral part the apex is rounded and blunt and is directed superiorly extending into the root of the neck opposite to the apex lies the base the base is semi lunar in shape surrounded by a sharp inferior border it is directed inferiorly and also known as the inferior surface it is concave as it rests on the convex dome of the diaphragm so the base is also known as the inferior surface or the diaphragmatic surface let us trace the borders starting from the apex we have the sharp anterior border inferior border and the rounded ill defined posterior border anterior border inferior border and the posterior border the costal surface is convex bears the impressions of the ribs the medial surface has the presence of the hilum it is further subdivided into an anterior large part the mediastinal part posterior vertebral part the arrangement of structures in the hilum is from anterior to posterior called the vab arrangement that is anterior most vein then the artery and posterior most bronchus vein artery and bronchus apex upwards base downwards medial surface medially costal surface laterally sharp anterior border lung of right side apex base costal surface apex upwards base downwards costal surface laterally medial surface medially sharp border anteriorly lung of left side the fissures and lobes of the lungs the right lung exhibits two fissures which divide it into three lobes the oblique fissure starts from the posterior border runs obliquely downwards and forwards to cut the inferior border the horizontal fissure starts from the anterior border runs horizontally to meet the oblique fissure in the mid axillary line these two fissures subdivide the right lung into three lobes superior or upper lobe middle lobe and the inferior or lower lobe the left lung shows only one fissure that is the oblique fissure which divides it into two lobes superior or upper lobe and inferior or lower lobe the anterior border of the left lung in its lower part shows a characteristic deep notch this notch is due to the presence of the heart on the left side hence called the cardiac notch the part of the left lung below the cardiac notch shows a tongue shaped projection which is called the lingula this lingula corresponds to the middle lobe of the lower left lung the fissures of the lung cut through or extend through the whole thickness of the lungs except the hilum these fissures allow uniform expansion of the lungs during respiration the lower lobe expands downwards and backwards whereas the upper and middle lobes expand upwards and out forwards there is a lot of variation in the number and presence of the fissures and lobes 
both the right and left lung may show accessory lobes posteriorly as well as inferiorly the left lung may have an additional middle lobe due to a congenital anomaly of the development of azygous vein an additional lobe may be present in the upper part of the right lung called the lobe of the azygous vein due to this variability the site determination of the lung is never done on the basis of the fissures and lobes two interchangeable terms used are hilum and root of the lung let's differentiate them root refers to the structures which enter or leave the lung example the bronchus and the pulmonary vessels mainly whereas the hilum is the area on the medial surface of the lung where all these structures enter or leave the lung the root of the lung that is these structures are enclosed in a double layer of mediastinal pleura this mediastinal pleura shows a downward extension just below the root of the lung known as the pulmonary ligament this pulmonary ligament contains areolar tissue and allows expansion and downward movement of the root of the lung during respiration the structures present in the root of the lung mainly the bronchus on the left side there is only one bronchus called the principal bronchus on the right side there are two bronchi above the artery called the hip arterial bronchus and below the artery called the hip arterial bronchus we have the pulmonary vessels which carry oxygenated and deoxygenated blood to and from the lung one pulmonary artery and two pulmonary veins superior and inferior on each side to supply the lung tissue we have the bronchial vessels the bronchial arteries their number is opposite to the number of the bronchi that is two on the left side and one on the right side and two bronchial veins on each sides apart from the vessels we will have the nerves in the form of anterior and posterior pulmonary plexus of nerves lymph nodes the main lymph nodes are the bronchopulmonary lymph nodes and their accompanying lymphatics and the areolar tissue so to summarize the structures present in the root of the lung are the bronchi the pulmonary vessels the bronchial vessels nerve plexus lymph nodes lymphatics and areolar tissue the arrangement of structures in the root of the lung the arrangement from anterior to posterior is same on both the sides as already discussed the mnemonic is vab from anterior to posterior superior pulmonary vein anterior most pulmonary artery in the middle and the bronchus lies posterior most however the arrangement from above downward varies on both the sides and this variation is due to an additional bronchus present on the right side on the left side from above downwards that is from superior to inferior the arrangement is abv superior most lies the pulmonary artery below it lies the bronchus and inferior most is the inferior pulmonary vein however on the right side we have an additional bronchus present above the pulmonary artery called the ep arterial bronchus so the arrangement on the right side is from above downward b a b v so ep arterial bronchus pulmonary artery below the pulmonary artery hip arterial bronchus and inferior most remains the inferior pulmonary vein the lung of the right side apex and base the lung of the left side apex and base on the right side we have two fissures that is the deep oblique fissure and the horizontal fissure 
these two fissures subdivide the right lung into three lobes superior middle and inferior lobe on the left side we have only one fissure that is the oblique fissure this oblique fissure subdivides the left lung into two lobes upper and lower lobe the arrangement of structures in the hilum the pulmonary vessels the vein is shown red in color and the artery is blue in color as these are the pulmonary vessels the arrangement from anterior to posterior is same on both the sides vein artery and bronchus that is anteriorly vein in the middle the pulmonary artery and posterior most bronchus on the left side again same anteriorly vein then the artery and posterior most is the bronchus vab arrangement from above downwards on the right side uppermost lies the ep arterial bronchus then the pulmonary artery below it the hip arterial bronchus and the inferior pulmonary vein that is babv on the left side uppermost is the artery the bronchus and the inferior pulmonary vein abv hope it was useful thank you